This circuit board is a flight computer that I've been designing to pilot an actively stabilised model rocket that I've been working on. With a STM32 F4 microcontroller at its core, this computer can control a thrust vectoring rocket using its IMU and magnetometer for estimating attitude, a barometer for altitude, a built-in radio for remote configuration, and I.O. for a GPS receiver, reaction wheel, and more. I designed this board in KiCad and I'll quickly explain the process I went through. I started by drawing up a schematic, which is a document that shows what components are used and how they are connected to each other. These components include chips, sensors, power circuitry, passive components, and lots of others. I then moved over to the layout and routing stage of PCB design, where you specify where components are physically placed on the board and route the copper traces to pads and pins that need connecting, as described in the schematic. I decided to make it a four layer board with inner ground and 3.3 volt planes for easy routing and short return paths. For me, the tricky thing about PCB design is interpreting datasheets, which are the documents describing the components you're using. For radio circuitry especially, it's very, very important to follow the placement and layout guides they give. The same is true for power circuitry and especially switching regulators, which is what I decided to use on this board. Once I was happy with my design and had checked it over and over again, I sent my files to a PCB manufacturer so the board could be produced. I also chose to have the board assembled by a machine, so a few days later I received two practically complete printed circuit boards, along with a couple of blank spares. The reason I chose to get them pre-assembled is that I tried to assemble my first ever PCB myself, which resulted in me creating multiple shorts around the ICs and possibly killing one of the chips before I even plugged it in, because of my excessive use of the hot air gun. Since my new PCB, which is my second attempt, worked, I'll probably get all of my future boards pre-assembled as well. Anyway, once I completed the board by soldering on a couple of connectors, I 3D printed some mounting brackets so I could put it in a rocket and begin testing. I also wanted to test the GPS navigation at some point, so I made a slot for a GNSS receiver at the top of the stack. The firmware for this board is written in C++ using the Arduino framework. Because this board is designed by myself and has several very obscure sensors on it, I had to write many of the device drivers on my own, which were actually very fast due to their barebones nature. Before this, however, I actually started programming this board using the STM32 framework using Cube IDE, but stopped after struggling to get a couple of features working. It turns out Arduino is still practical and much easier, even with custom hardware. So anyway, my Arduino code estimates the rocket's orientation using only the onboard gyroscopes and not the accelerometers, using quaternion multiplication to calculate orientation using only the measured angular rates. If calibrated, the estimate is actually very accurate, with basically no drifts during a realistic flight time. I also wrote some pretty cool software that allows a computer to remotely configure and send commands to the rocket. It's written in Python and uses a command tree structure stored in a JSON file to interpret commands. It's really simple and essential for setting up shoots on the pad, calibrating sensors, zeroing out estimates before launch and much more. It communicates to both the flight computer and the launch pad, but I'll talk more about that in a later video. Here's a quick test of parachute deployment, which is remotely triggered by my Python software. The most important thing this flight computer does is stabilising and guiding the rocket. It uses a control system that keeps the rocket on course by making corrections to the thrust angle. The control system is, in my case, a simple PID, which only takes a few lines of code. The flight computer runs this control loop 50 times per second, each time sending new commands to the servos that control the thrust vectoring gimbal. Another very important feature is data logging, as it allows me to troubleshoot bad flights and measure the rocket's performance. I approach this by getting the flight computer to write a large struct to a flash chip on the back of my circuit board 50 times per second. This chip is non-volatile, so it retains data even if the board power cycles or loses power altogether. The data can be retrieved after the flight via USB or via radio, where it is then dumped into a CSV file on the connected computer. 
So that was a quick rundown on what my flight computer is and what it can do, but I'm still working on some more advanced features. I want my rocket to be able to control its position, not just its attitude, so I'm implementing a Kármán filter. It's very complicated and I certainly don't fully understand how it works, but it's actually quite easy to copy out the equations in code, especially when you have a good system for handling matrices. I'll be releasing more videos on the rocket itself, the launch pad and more in the months to come, so subscribe if you want to follow along. I think that I'm only a few weeks away from a launch, with only the Kármán filter and some of the launch pad to finish off. If you want to see bits of footage and progress updates as they happen, you can follow my Twitter on screen in the video description. I also want to say thanks for all your comments and advice on my last video. I've certainly learnt a lot since then and I wouldn't be able to do this without helpful people on the internet. If you are trying to do something similar, I've linked some great channels for learning electronics, Arduino, PCB design and rocketry in the description that I found really useful when I was making this board. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.